Government. I'm Dee Margo. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Came to El Paso 40 years ago, March 1. I'm a token by marriage. I'm married to a third generation El Paso that I met in college. Uh, joined her father in business on, let's say, March 1 of 1977. I was the fifth employee at the John D. Williams Company. Small mom and pop insurance operation. History goes back to 1898. I uh, ran that for, I uh, worked there for four years until I was 20. When I was 29, my father-in-law passed away abruptly from a heart attack. And I was fortunate enough to convince my mother-in-law and the estate to uh, allow me to buy the business on debt. I bought the business, I bought it in, in, uh, in 1981. I, ran, I was there for 35 years, 31 of which I was the, uh, the uh, CEO. Uh, 2012, they sold. During that tenure of my 35 years there, I was involved in many, numerous civic organizations. I served as the Secretary of the Army for eight years, one of the most enjoyable experiences I've ever had. And then I did the EPISD Board of Managers after serving in the state legislature. Who did you vote for in the last election? I'm sure everybody would like to know. Yes. Um, what are you doing about the Donald Trump Do you plan to extend it? And if so, how? Can you repeat that? Yes, please. What are your feelings about the downtown and the railroad, Stanton Street, Charlie? And you kind of expand it and just so how? Well, I was on the MPO when we, as a member of the state legislature, when, when uh, we agreed to do this and followed along with what uh, our county judge, Brian Gaspar, wanted to do. I'm in complete It's done. We're talking about maybe extending it into Juarez or also whatever else they can do. But a lot of it's going to have to do with funding. Most of this is tax funding. Not sure our budget right So it has to be state and or federal dollars that are available. But if we're going to, we need to see how it's going to work now and uh, get rid of the construction and the potholes and all the other problems that people are talking about uh, that are of great concern. But yeah, it should be a great driver for, for, the, for uh, downtown as well as when you deal with the uh, economic uh, renaissance that's occurring downtown. It's real positive. What are the top three priorities that you will address on your first day if you are elected? And given that this is International Women's Day and that Hispanic women earn less than half uh, for their salaries of what white men earn in this community, uh, could you mention at least one thing involving gender equality? Well, Kathleen, I never, we never had any problem with John and we want to be related to gender equality. In fact, uh, there were several of our uh, female producers who made more money than I did. So I'm pretty sure that we uh, that I've got a pretty good reputation for supporting that. And besides that, I'm married to Dare Margo. In most cases, people know me as Mr. Dare Margo. So you know, that's the way life is. But, but the issues that are coming up here are public safety, roads, transportation, economic development, which is jobs, public safety. Did I say public safety twice? No. Transportation. Uh, those are the issues you've got to deal with. If you look at our charter, the number one priority is public safety. Uh, we are the uh, second safest city in the, in the nation. But the other part is on the job creation and taxes. I, that's when I left off. The only way we're going to increase our taxes, tax base, is with education and attracting more jobs. Both expansion of existing businesses as well as bringing in new businesses. And right now, we're not in a position to raise our property taxes anymore at all, period, for some time. So how are we going to do it? We've got to have well-paying jobs for which people spend their dollars in consumer, in consumer. So sales tax revenues, that's going to be one of the major drivers. I'd just like to ask you why you think you are the best mayoral candidate um, to run uh, for office here in El Paso. Um, I see a lot of your sites in uh, very affluent neighborhoods and they look very nice. But I just kind of wonder, I don't see those sites in sort of the least less expensive neighborhoods, and I wonder how, uh, if you might have a conflict of interest between you being supported and representing these neighborhoods as opposed to the majority of the rest of the people in El Paso. I don't think I have any problem in identifying with the rest of the people of El Paso. I went to college on a football scholarship because my parents, frankly, if I hadn't had a football scholarship, I wouldn't have gone to college. My father lost his job before my freshman year in college. He lost it again the third time. 
when I came here and bought JDW insurance at age 29, I didn't have the resources to do it. I hadn't been able to have it leveraged in the debt from my mother-in-law in the bank. I wouldn't have bought it. I couldn't have done it. So to, there's, a, there's a misimpression out there. I've worked my entire life. I understand what it's like. I built silo foundations one summer in college. I worked in an iron foundry another summer in Alabama before I went to college. I've worked my entire life. I understand what it takes. That my efforts in the legislature and the support of my fellow Democratic colleagues when I ran for re-election and I did serve on the Appropriations Committee, and then my work at EPISD dealing with a the, the, the hellhole, that's one person said to me, that was left over by Lorenzo Garcia and what he did, and the turnaround we did there, and Bob Jeske's here, and I compliment Bob because he's doing a great job on the trustee. Like that. me after you guys need to consider running. I had not ever considered that. I thought with a city manager form of government, I couldn't have a whole lot of value. And I started looking around. I looked at Dallas. I looked at some other areas. And I saw where their mayors really did some very positive things. I think a mayor ought to be an ambassador for jobs. And that's the key of what we can bring in. But the city council and the mayor must hold the city manager accountable for the performance of all areas within city government. I think sometimes right now we have a little too much little micromanaging. I'm not in favor of that. Those who observed me when we ran the EPISD, which frankly, ladies and gentlemen, has a larger budget than the core budget of our city. It has a $480 million budget. When you look at the employer in El Paso, the largest employer in El Paso is Fort Bliss. The second largest employer is EPISD with $180 million budget. Now, the enterprise budget of the city is $900 million. That's thrown in there. The, the, the airport, buses, garbage collection, and everything else. The core budget's less than 400 million. So we, the thing we did at EPISD that, that Bob was has to do and others is we inherited a budget by the prior trustees that was a $20 million shortfall. We balanced that with no increase in taxes, no layoffs by teachers, and laid it on the firm foundation to move forward and revamp everything. That's why I think I'm capable of responding to the challenges of this community. And given all of the uh, taxes that we're going to be paying because of the bond elections, which I would...